to meet you. Great to meet you. <laughs> I, I, think, I think that you can see the Queen's Tower. I think that that copper dome is the Queen's Tower. Over that way. Oh, yeah. I see. It's a pleasure to meet you, Hugh, and thank you so much for agreeing to do this today. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm delighted to be here. I wondered what, what attracted you to Imperial? Why did you want to move here? Well, op opportunity to, to lead one of the world's great research universities, first and foremost. But there's a personal piece as well. So uh, I entered academic medicine mainly because I was inspired um, during a medical school elective um, in Hammersmith you know, all those years ago. So it's kind of a bookending of a, of a career with the imperial experience. So, so you mentioned briefly working at the Hammersmith and that being part of your story to getting here. But I wondered what it was that really inspired you to get into medicine in the first place. What made you want to study medicine? Yeah, gosh, I'm often asked that. I'm, I'm not really sure. I mean, um, <laughs> I, I had a grandfather who was a, a rural GP in County Wexford in Ireland. So that was, you know, and as kids we would go down and visit. So there was a bit of mystique about this, you know, all of these uh, concoctions, you know, <laughs> that, that he would be rustling up for, for, uh, um, for his patients. So that was probably part of it. And then, you know, at a certain stage, um, having entered medicine, got the kind of bug for academic medicine. And that was around people. So I had a fantastic professor of, of uh, medicine, uh, Murish Fitzgerald, who, who was when you still were in, Ireland. Ireland. in Dublin. Yeah. yeah. So he was kind of our professor. And, um, and he was just, he was an inspiration. He was a superb clinician wonderful you know bedside skills but was always talking about mechanisms of disease and always pointing out you know where the frontiers were and and how little we knew about even basic diseases he was respiratory so you know asthma how little we knew and prompting us then to think about how you know what we could do to fill that knowledge gap so you know i, I think like so many of us uh, you know mentors are important and these role models that at certain times uh, and phases of our career we meet, you know, are very influential. I was wondering what, what do you look to achieve during your time here? Do you have any kind of plans for what you want the college to become? So I think, I think the big thing for me initially is, is to recognise the strengths you know, of the university, which are just fantastic, and then to really engage and listen to colleagues and, and understand what their ambitions are, you know, what, what are their dreams and ambitions? So, I mean, my job is really, I think, to, to work on creating the ecosystem so everybody, staff or students, can really reach their full potential. Students are really important to us here at Imperial, and I wondered what you thought some of the biggest issues that of the kind of challenges students are facing are. Well, I, I must say, I think, I think students now are a lot more mature than when I was a medical <laughs> student. Uh, I, you know, they think about the world, I think, in a much more kind of holistic and mature way. Um, so I think first and foremost, you know, students are looking for an inspiring education that sets them up for a good career. But I'm, I'm also really interested in the way students now think about the society that they want to live in, the lifestyle they want to have, the, their values, and of course the planet in a way that we never did. It's wonderful to hear and it kind of comes back to what inspires students. I think seeing that leadership in research, seeing that kind of conversation with you and hearing those messages inspires them to go off and create and to do wonderful things. So just, just to be part of, of that community, you know, where I can help people realise their, their full potential in these critically important areas for both individual society and the planet, just fantastic for me. So and a real privilege, I should say, you know. So obviously there are certain groups that are particularly underrepresented in subjects like science and engineering. And I was wondering how you felt you could contribute to that, improving that sense of belonging for students and staff from historically marginalized groups. So first, I'm, I'm really encouraged that it's, it, it's, people are talking about this within the college. So it, it's been identified clearly as an issue, but there's an ambition to do so much more. It's an area that I'm passionate about and it's a conversation that I look forward to having. Uh, and certainly for me as the incoming president, what is most reassuring is that people are already talking about it and already think it should be a priority. Yeah, and it's wonderful. I, I truly believe a more diverse scientific community will be a better and a more productive scientific community, as Absolutely. well as making it a better place for all of us to work in. Yeah, and a better learning uh, environment for, for our, our students. Completely. It's so exciting. And I wonder whether you, you kind of had any advice to scientists starting out. I think, I think first to follow their passion. You know, they, they've, got, they've got to love what they're doing. And perhaps, perhaps secondly, but, but, and, and in the modern era, maybe more importantly, 
is to appreciate that m most careers, uh, academic, research and otherwise, they're no longer linear, you know, is, is to be, so to be willing to make a right turn or a left turn or indeed loop around if, if, if an opportunity comes up. And that opportunity, I think, you know, you see it and you feel it when you walk around Imperial. You can go into entrepreneurship, you could go and do a course in mm. the business school, you can go and learn something like philosophy, you can join the Royal College of Music and play these beautiful symphonies. You have that chance all mm. within one postcode. It's really quite an extraordinary place to be. I mean, the business school, I think, is a really good example where they're absolutely world class in terms of the nuts and bolts of kind of you know finance and marketing and leadership that the standard courses that any business school should offer but but what i really what really excites me is the way they're engaging with the world of climate change or the world of green technologies mm -hmm. or the world of biotechnologies so again harnessing what other parts of imperial has to offer uh, Everyone has to have these funny conversations when you're in the line to buy coffee or something, where you're like, what do you do and how can we work yeah. together? And some of the best ideas you know, are sparked by those um, <laughs> chance conversations. Coffee yeah. is important. We're very, very lucky. Yeah. So I wonder, uh, alongside coffee, what, was, what do you remember best about being a student? What, what were some of your highlights of being a student? Gosh, that's a yeah, that's a, a hard question. Well, of course, uh, I mean the highlights are the friends that you make when you're a student. So some of my well, my my closest friends now were um, were my med from my medical school days, uh, and uh, there's a group of um, about eight of us who meet up uh, probably every quarter um, and, and have managed to do that no matter what part of the globe we're in. So uh, you know, I think first and foremost, the friendships that you generate, uh, if you look after them you know, will be friendships for life. Firstly, I wonder whether you have any free time. And then if you do have any free time, what do you do in that free time? Oh, gosh. Well, I won't answer the first one. It was, <laughs> I, do have so, I do have some free time. Um, I'm a, an enthusiastic but very moderate kind of golfer. But, uh, but, I, but I do enjoy it. And, uh, and I have three sons who, who are avid golfers and an awful lot more talented than I am. So occasionally I surprise them. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. So, so who or what makes you laugh? Oh my goodness. Well, actually, I'm talking about my sons. So certainly they do, particularly when they're ribbing their dad about something. <laughs> um, gosh, who else? Ted Lasso? Have you watched Ted yeah, Lasso? Yeah, I've watched Ted Lasso. Yeah, if, if ever I want a good laugh, I just turn, even if I've seen it before. It's I very turn comforting, it on. right? Yeah, Having it's a, a football yeah, Very clever. Yeah. Imperial has an extraordinary community of about 240,000 alumni mm. all over the world working in different sectors and pushing these new boundaries and doing incredible things. And I wondered, as president, what your thoughts and visions were for that alumni community. So I think they're just a, criti a critically important community. Um, I mean, first, first and foremost, they're, they're wonderful ambassadors for Imperial. But Imperial, uh, 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 you know, flipping it around, Imperial cannot, I think, um, realize its full potential without the support of those alumni. They'll, they're going to be critically important and I really look forward to engaging with them. What is so fantastic here is the, the ingredients that we have to play with. I mean, you know, what, what a fantastic set of kind of ingredients, whether it's our, our, our students engaging with alumni and, and, and donors, our, 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 our research, which undoubtedly has and co will continue to inspire them. Not all universities have that fantastic set of ingredients. So it's, uh, I, I would hope the future is really bright on that front. Yeah, you do feel it. You feel it walking around when you speak to our extraordinary students, just how lucky we are to have such brilliant ones. Indeed. And I hope they continue to shape all of the vision in the future. Yeah. So thank you so much for that discussion. It was absolutely fantastic. And, and we're really, really lucky that you're joining us. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a privilege and uh, I'm very excited. So many, many thanks.